Good. I was waiting for a wet willy, really. I can't move now. Okay, I guess we're ready to start. Let me tell you something. This has been a trying time. Uh, if you don't believe me, ask my mother. It's a... Uh, with work and everything else, it's like, when do I have time? To... Pastor told me this a year ago, and my motto was, why do it today if I can put it off till tomorrow? So about uh, just before we went to Tennessee, I met Pastor Burris. He was, we were down in the parking lot and, again, gave me some words of encouragement. Here, here we are. I got it together. I'm hoping that I have enough time. Of course, that says we're – it's. It's already 10 to 1, so I'm already running late, according to the clock we got here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just uh, uh, the voice of the martyrs has uh, always been something that I've been interested in and in, uh, in talking about and telling about uh, what it is is a missionary organization that serves persecuted Christians in the world's most difficult and dangerous places to be a Christian. Uh, we saw the film Wednesday night. It was founded by Richard and Sabina Warbrand in 1967. Uh, the video, the movie we watched was about his life. He showed you what he went through 14 years in a communist prison. Voice of the Martyrs is dedicated to inspiring all believers to a biblical faith by encouraging their commitment to Christ and fulfillment of his great commission, no matter the cost. Uh, you can always go to persecu persecution.com and... Uh, find out more about them and I have some things later on. Okay. International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians. What is it? It's a day, once uh, the first Sunday in November every year, it is a global prayer meeting on behalf of persecuted Christians who stand as a bold witness to Christ on the world's most dangerous, difficult mission field. Uh, people today all around the world are doing, talking about this. Uh, uh, other parts of the world, it was yesterday, but there's, they still had these meetings. They still were talking about persecuted Christians around the world. Biblical truth put into practice. As disciples, we are called to be light bearers, bold, pro boldly proclaiming the truth of Christ while living in the darkness of this world. As this world gets darker, it has never been more important to stand up for Christ. And that is so the truth. This world, the way things are going now, uh, as pastors taught us in the past, be ready to stand firm because it's going to get tough. Why is light comforting to a frightened child in a pitch black room? Nothing in the room, nothing in the dark room wasn't there during the daylight. But the absence of lights, there's an innate fear within the human heart. And the only remedy is the presence of light. The same is true of spiritual darkness. Whatever spiritual darkness you are facing, Christ alone is the source of light who dispels all darkness. Christ sets biblical dis disciples on a course to proclaim his light in order to advance the kingdom of Christ in a dark and getting ever darker world. This is supposed to be... Five minute video. I never chose to become a Buddhist monk. My parents chose it for me.
they send me far away to a monastery. And my father left me there. For the next nine years, I was trained to be a monk. Eight hours a day, seven days a week. All I did was memorize and recite. Memorize and recite. The words of the Buddhist text spoke of peace and tranquility. But my teachers lived something very different. I was 13 when I finally ran away from the monastery. You left the monastery, why? Shame! My father said I had shamed the family because I didn't finish my training. He enrolled me in first grade. He would begin my education all over again. Okay, so today we have a new student joining us. So everyone say hello to Sezun. You? You? And you take your name. One of my teachers talked to me with respect, showed me a kindness I never experienced in monastery. You can read this for me. Uh, the first John. Okay, great. God showed how much he loved us by sending his He's one, one, the end, one, only. What is this? Huh? You're not supposed to read these types of books in the house! I have met a new family. And David and his wife have given me a place to stay. I'm reading more from the book David gave me. I have read about the light. It is the light I want.
Wow. That is a, uh, you beat your own child for reading the Bible. Something completely different than what we teach here. You know, where we encourage our youngest ones from this little one over here on up. You know, the word of God is what you need to be and it's where you need to be. Uh, while Buddhism, Buddhism is more than 2,500 years old, the teachings of Buddhism have become more prominent globally in the last 50 years. It's perceived to be a peaceful religion, like some of those other religions, like the Muslims. Peaceful. But it is simply spiritual darkness. Basic belief of Buddhism, the human life is one of, one of suffering, and that meditation, spiritual and physical labor, and good behavior are the ways to achieve enlightenment or nirvana. But people believe this stuff. In places like Nepal, Buddhism openly reveals itself as the blackest, darkest darkness as Buddhists work to appease spirits whom they know to be evil. I just, did you face anything like that when you were in Nepal? Our pastor seen it firsthand. He was there. Buddhists also perpetrate the, perpetrate the persecution of Christians in their communities. Young adults who come to faith in Christ are driven from their homes, just like Sejun was. All of this is done explicitly to appease and court favor with evil spirits we know to be demons. Or as we have learned in past studies, fallen angels who, like their master, work to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's the first place we're going to go is the book of John 10.10. Uh, the scriptures this morning just we're just going to hit a couple places uh, this isn't going to be like a normal class we have this is more of a, a eye-opening making you aware and a little bit of teaching too to uh, about what's going on around the world john 10 10 if i can find it john 10 10 the thief does not come expect except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. First place, first one thing we're going to talk about is the source of light. And that is, uh, you can turn to John 8, 12. Just a couple pages to the left. John 8, 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness but have the light of life. That I am statement is the second of seven I am statements Jesus makes in the Gospel of John. In each of these statements, Jesus is revealing something about his identity as God's son. Look over in 1 Peter 2.9. You don't have to turn there, but unless you want to. 1 Peter 2.9. Uh, I do have that in my Bible. I looked at it before. What it says there in First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. It says you're really a royal priesthood. What past pastor been teaching about? He's taught us about that recently. That is, he's talking to Christians, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. First, in first Peter one, in first Peter two nine, the apostle Paul indicates that we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, the ones that he sent. Oh, hold on, I'm not used to technology like this. If we want to know what God is, but if we want to know what God is like, we see a perfect representation of his God, of God in His Son Jesus Christ. This I am language is familiar to, the, to a Jewish audience as a declaration whereby God calls his people to remember his nature and character. First see that in Genesis 15, 1. 
Genesis 15, 1. And Genesis 15, 1 is not in Exodus. It's in 15, 1. Ex Genesis 15, 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Second one you can see is you can look at, you can just jot these down. Exodus, what, Exodus 3, 14. God told Moses, I am who I am. 314 read, reads, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Yes. Third one is just uh, Isaiah 44, 24. Isaiah 44, 24. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretched out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad, who spreads abroad the earth by myself. The light, the Greek word phos is often used in poetic discourse and metaphor and in parable. Light is used to illuminate a path. Light is used to reveal or discern. Specifically in John 8, 12, Jesus is the light by which true light, true life is gained. Jesus declared the exclusivity of himself as the light. He did not declare himself as a greater among equals, but exclusively as the only light by which true life is gained. You saw in that video, we met Sejun, he's from Nepal. We know people in Nepal. We have a, an outreach there. And uh, Pastor Burr shared with me this morning, they just had a major earthquake in Nepal near Kathmandu. Uh, we need to keep them in prayer. But Sejun from Nepal, from Nepal in the video, we're introduced to his life as a child in Buddhist culture. Global missiologists know that over 500 million people globally 6.3% of the earth's population are trapped in the spiritual darkness of Buddhism. They are not simply following an alternate spiritual light that may result in salvation. They are utterly lost. Of, the five, of that 500 million, more than eight, 385 million lives in areas that are considered unreached, which means that less than 2% of the population is considered Christian. And I know what y'all are thinking. How did I know a big word like missiologist? I didn't, so I Googled it. <laughs> missiology is the, the theological study of the mission of the church especially the character and purpose of missionary work additionally near nearly 18 million people following the darkness of buddhism live in areas on the mission frontier areas with virtually no followers of jesus and where pioneer cross-cultural workers are needed over 2,000 years have passed since Jesus spoke these words, I am the light of the world. Amen. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Amen. However, many places on our planet remain where this source of light, our Lord Jesus Christ, is not known among Buddhists. In places like Nepal, men and women, boys and girls, have little to no opportunity to live in the light of Christ. Uh, Pastor Burris, I never told you this, but uh, Pastor Bim has requested we go to Nepal, and I told him, there's no funds for that but this is what he was talking about uh, they need people look over at john one one through five john one verse five verses in the beginning god was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. All things were made through him, and what and without him was nothing made that was made. That's verse 3. Christ is powerful. 
and was present and active in every part of God's creative work as recorded in Genesis. Pastors taught us on this stuff. A lot of this is going to be reviewed because as I was going through it, I remembered what we've already been taught on a lot of it, but this is just a different angle of things. Uh, and this concept really got me. Think of this concept. The light of the world created light, the sun, the moon, and the stars. And Christ fully participated in the creation of the concept of light. He was the light. That's may not be to you, but to me, that's mind boggling. But that's it shows what our what our Lord can do. The light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. John 1 5 overcomes is the Greek in the Greek is I practice this word, but I still don't know it. Kelambano, which means generally to lay hold of, to make one's own, to obtain or to attain, or attain to. John 1 5 is specific, specifically Catalambano means to take into oneself, to appropriate. Simply put, the darkness, the darkness cannot take uh, light for its evil intent. As biblical disciples, we, we can certainly see evil, the darkness. We can even experience the evil that is part of the reality of this fallen world on which we live. But the darkness has no hold on biblical disciples. Therefore, trusting in the power of the light of the, of, of the light of Christ means biblical disciples are able to walk through the darkness of this world. Uh, Psalm 23.4 is a perfect example of that. Uh, we all know the 23rd Psalm, verse 4 reads that, Yea, though I walk through the valley of a shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. John 1, verses 9 through 13. Sorry for flipping back and forth, but you're used to it. John 1. John 1, 9 through, 4, 9 through 13 is where we're going to be next. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Verse 112, the force of this light is Christ. The force of this light of Christ is transformational in terms of the spiritual identity of those who trust, trust him. No longer are we children of darkness. First Thessalonians 5.5 5 tells us that. First Thessalonians 5.5 5 says, you are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We are transformed as new creations in, in Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, we find that if you want to turn there. You don't have to. I had these bookmarked until my bookmarks fell out. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God sets us apart. God sets us as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, holy. God's special possession as we praise the one who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that we read that in 1 Peter 2.9. Through faith in Christ and the bold and faithful witness of his of his teacher, Sejun experienced the right to become a child of God. Amen. Praise God that guy came into his life at just the right time. It's not coincidence, it's God. The power of the truth of the gospel overcame the spiritual darkness of Sejun's Buddhist experience. The spiritual darkness of Buddhism cannot overcome the light of Christ in the lives of those who hear and respond to the message of, of life. Amen. Maybe God is leading you to lead others to shine the light of Christ. 
we're always told to go out to preach the word and for this reason to lead others to shine the light of Christ in a particular way as you are obedient to fulfill the great commission the course of light for at one time you were darkness but now you are light in the world walk as children of light Ephesians 5 8 Ephesians 5, 8 reads, for you were once darkness, but now you are, you are light in the world. Walk as children of light. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked, twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. That is 2 Philippians. That is Philippians 2, 14 and 15. The course of light, but now you are light in the world. Walk as children of light. We just read that in Ephesians 5, 8. Light, the same Greek word as in John 8, 12. I am the light of life, but with the implication of persevering and keeping the light of Christ. Followers of Christ were first called Christians in Antioch. That is found in Acts eleven twenty six. Acts eleven twenty six. It reads like this: and when, and when he had found him, he brought to him he brought him to Antioch. So it was that the whole world, the whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Followers of Christ were first called Christians in Antioch, 1126. It is thought that uh, to have been a mocking term whereby they were called little Christ. Ephesians 5, 8 transforms the mockery into, into walk as little lights or little Christ. The course of biblical disciples is to walk in the light of Christ, giving evidence of the light of life found only in uh, Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, quick story, I got a a while back, I was working at the Terra. There was a gentleman that came to church here that I worked with. Uh, we got to talking, and he met some people here. And I went to work one day, and he says, you know what? I was talking to uh, the pastor's daughter, Kimberly. I said her name. He says, yeah, that's her. He says, you look at her, and you see Christ in her. Hey. He says, you can tell by looking at her she's a Christian. Kimberly, that's the greatest compliment you could probably ever get. So you are a light. Amen. The course of biblical disciples is to walk in the light of Christ, giving evidence to the light of life found of life found only in Christ our Lord. That you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked, twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. We've just read that in, in Philippians 2.15, the characteristics displayed in the lives of biblical disciples to be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish are not ends unto themselves. They are not moral imperatives in order to live without defect or uh, for the betterment of a fallen temporal world. Instead, they are a way Paul gives biblical disciples an understanding to our witness and influence to shine as lights in the world. Our ability to share the light of Christ comes from, comes from the observance by those living in a wicked and crooked generation that we are transformed by the same light of Christ that we declare. Sajun's mother risks social ostracization and more likely physical punishment from her family. You saw what they did, what the father did to his son. Imagine what he would have done to his wife by attending Sejun's baptism in a public forum. Eventually, however, the transformation she had seen in Sejun's life was enough for her to inquire about Jesus. As Sejun and our other littlest persecuted Christian brothers and sisters share the light of Christ, they risk, in some cases, their lives as they do. Uh, we're getting ready to close, but not really there yet. Uh, I have no idea what time it is. But it doesn't matter. We're gonna we're gonna take some time. We're gonna pray. 
for the children among the global family of faith who risk much to shine the light of Christ where they live, the world's most difficult and dangerous places to follow Christ. As we pray for our littlest Christian brothers and sisters living in hostile areas and restricted nations, pray that they will abide in Christ as, as the source of their lives. Pray that they will experience the power that comes from a life fully consecrated to Christ and that as they sense his presence, they will continue to share the light of Christ boldly with others. Pray that they will endure serving Christ faithfully for the rest of their lives, despite likely paying great prices to do so. Yes. Pray that you and others here today will become known around the valley as little Christ and will be inspired by Sejun and other persecuted Christians to serve Christ boldly and faithfully at any cross. When I was reading that, the first person that popped into my mind was Obadiah. As we get ready to do a short time of prayer, we want to remember others too. And I am so blessed to have two of them here today. They're online. Uh, we need to remember to pray for Israel and what's going on there, as well as the pastors uh, from the Free Grace Bible Institute around the world. Uh, Pastor Zishan in Pakistan, he's here with us today. Thank you, brother, for joining us. Pastor Zishan, Remember, he is preaching Christ in a Muslim nation. Uh, Pastor Peter Kabunda, we all know what happened to him recently in Zambia. Pastor Peter, again, thank you for being here also. Uh, his church put him out. When he was put out of his church, he was put out of his home. Uh, he was put out of his church and his home for preaching Christ. That's what we're here for. Right. And they put them out. Uh, we did get an update from Pastor Peter. Uh, they moved uh, nine hours away from where he was living. They relocated. Uh, he went to find a place for him and Alice to live. And uh, they're moving on. They're not looking back. He's keeping the faith. He's doing his job, what he's supposed to do. And brother, you're an inspiration to all of us here at Westside. Uh, also, we want to remember the Free Grace Baptist Church of Kathmandu and the orphanage with our brother John in Nepal. Uh, I don't know how close they were to this earthquake, but they, it was a ways away. It was a ways away, but it was. We still need to keep them in prayer. We've seen what happens with uh, the Buddhists there in Nepal. Yeah. Three ways you can. Three ways to pray with the voice of the martyrs. You can uh, get a global prayer guide. There's some left on the back table back there. Um, I'm breaking things. Yeah. They are these little prayer guides. They are really good tools in the center of it or close to the center of it. They have a map and uh, the map, we have a larger size on the, uh, just in the staircase there. It is mapped out as restricted areas. It shows you the areas where Christ and Christianity is restricted, and it shows you where it is hostile. Uh, this is a good guide. Also, you can go to their website, and you can be a partner in prayer with one of the frontline workers there. Uh, Persecution.com is their website. Uh, you can also go to ICommitToPray.com, and you can walk through the steps there and commit to pray for these folks uh, that are out there working tirelessly in places that hate him. And that brings us to the United States of America. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. This is what people were chanting all over the world after the start of the war in Israel. You know where else this was being chanted? I didn't do that. Washington, D.C., Tampa, Florida, places around Texas, California, and many other places right here in our own country. They are promoting, well, I'll move on because I can get started. All around the world and right here at home, people are supporting child rapists, murderers, and just complete barbarians. They are chanting support for Palestine, 
The government of Palestine is Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist organization that rapes and kills women and children. And people in the United States of America are supporting this. It's disgusting. Uh, the views expressed here today are mine, not necessarily those of the church. They may be, but this is me. Do you think persecution against Christians is coming to America? I don't think it's coming to America. It's here. It's already here. We're not facing it on the stage, on the scale that they're facing around the world, but it's here. After what we saw in the movie Wednesday night, and after what Pastor recently taught us a few Sundays ago with the war in Israel in Psalm 83, we need to be praying for our country. We need to be praying for each other. Amen. That we and all Christians around the country and around the world will be ready to stand and defend their faith and to shine as lights in this dark world. When they come and they start chanting whatever it was that Palestine will be free. Are you going to be able to stand up from the river to the sea? Palestine will be free. When they start chanting that or locally, are you going to be able to stand with the word and shine as a light as they're doing this? Oh, that's the end of the slides, but I, I do have, uh, you can go to that website, persecution.com and you can sign up for a free magazine. It, it talks about different, it, it just gives you uh, different people uh, that you can be praying for. It gives you different information about Voice of the Martyrs. Another thing that I got when I uh, signed up for the package that they, they send out every year, I got Fox's Voice of the Martyrs. It is a, uh, you can use it as a devotional. It starts way back. Uh, with the first martyr, and it talks about Stephen. And I have this. If I have two copies of it, if you don't want it, I'm going to give it away to whoever does. Uh, Pastor has it also. So if anybody wants this, it's here. Uh, it's yours. Um, <laughs> story I have about Stephen since I brought him up. Uh, Scotty Wasco, back when I was a yoke fellow, uh, we had our deacons meeting in pastor's office over here, and he brought up to the deacons that he was ready to bring me up as a deacon. And and, um, and as he was saying this, he brought up the story of Stephen. And I'm like, are, if I say yes, are you going to stone me? He, the way he presented the story really had me scared to become a deacon. But I did it anyway, and it's worked out pretty well. <laughs> so um, I do have, I wanted to read something. If I can find it, I, you know me in technology. I don't like it. Uh, but I wanted to read this. Uh, oddly enough, the Lord sent it to me. Voice of the Martyr sent this to me just the other day. Uh, There's a family, let me see where, this Christmas, we invite you to help provide hopes and support for persecuted Christians. That's the end of it. How come I don't have the beginning of it? There we go. Sahid and Memona, their story is a testament of unwavering faith, even in the face of, face of unimaginable adversity. Sahid and his wife, Memona, they lived in a small village in central Pakistan with their six children. Sahid had been raised as a Hindu, but his wife came to faith in Christ shortly after hearing the gospel from a Christian evangelist. As Sahid learned more about Christ through Mamona's, Mamona's witness, he too placed his trust in Christ. And the couple, couple grew in faith through regular prayer and fellowship with other Christians. Pakistani Christians routinely face discrimination and persecution because of their Christian identity, and Sahid and Mimona were no exception. Sahid's Hindu relatives, who noted the family's absence from Hindu festivals and times of prayer, sent Hindu religious leaders to their home to urge them to return to Hinduism. 
but the couple remained remain faith, faithful and firm in their commitment to Christ. A few weeks later, someone set fire to their house, and their two youngest children died in the fire. Another child, one of their sons, suffered burns when he tried to save his younger siblings. Believing someone had intentionally burned their home, the couple went to the local police station to report it. The authorities, however, pressured Sahid and Mamona to report the fire as an accident. With their home in ruins, Sahid, Mamona, and their four remaining children moved in with a neighbor. Voice of the Martyrs helped, helped the family replace and refurnish their home and continue to assist with, this, with the family ongoing needs, providing food, clothing, and other essentials. Christian workers are also ministering to the family as they recover from the trauma of losing two of their children and their home. I am happy to see that you care about us, Mamona said. We are very thankful for your help. God show mercy on you and bless you more. She was burned out of her home and lost two of her kids and she's still praying for others. She's still praising God. That should be a great witness for us. Amen. And with that, i just take a minute. We're going to go to prayer, and we're going to remember uh, the youngest brothers and sisters. i wait till after the end, and then... I was thinking about the people that are praying. Yes. That's all around the world. It's not just these places that I mentioned. Uh, persecution is all around the world. Ukraine, Pakistan, uh, everywhere. So let's just take a minute. Uh, we're going to go, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord. Uh, Lord, the videos that we've seen today and the video from Wednesday night shows us the need that people need you, that people need to hear the word of the word of to hear your word and to hear the message of life all around the world. Father, we pray for all of those that are in these nations, in these countries, in these cities that are being persecuted. We pray that, Lord, that uh, they will endure and persevere through this punishment. And, Father, we pray for all of those that are going uh, to help, to bring supplies, to bring whatever's needed, to bring prayer and comfort. But most of all, Lord, for those that are bringing your light, the word of your, the, the word that you gave us. They are bringing the message of life to preach you in these terrible, uh, hostile nations. Lord, we lift these folks up. We lift the, each of the workers and the individuals being persecuted. And for those right here in America, Lord, it's, it's coming to us. Give us the strength to stand strong, to stand firm, and to, to be, always be the light that you have, uh, led us to be. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all you do. I thank you for everybody here today and for all those online. And Lord, I thank you so much uh, for Pastor Zishan and Pastor Peter, who were able to get on today and be with us. Uh, Lord, bless them. Give them strength and guidance as they go through uh, their in their portion of the world. Father, watch over and guide us as we go through the rest of our day. Father, we just give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our soon coming King. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I commend you now to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Set your mind on things above and not on the things of this earth, for you have died and your life is hid with Christ in God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and peace be with you. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. And all God's people said, amen. amen. And thank you, Brother Bruce, for that excellent presentation. And let us always 
remember to keep our brothers and sisters in prayer around the world, whether you know them or not, pray for them. And especially those connected with, with us through FGBI. Uh, Pastor Burris, would you come and close us? In? Dear Father, Lord, thank you for a uh, great day where we were able to have a celebration of communion and Lord, and then uh, a great presentation by our brother Bruce to uh, uh, come and bring us the information on what's going on around the world. Lord, let us be more of a light. Lord, we're in a dark world, Lord, but Lord, you you shine a light through us, Lord, to be able to uh, share the, the greatest news and the greatest message of all, and that's you, Lord. Lord, we pray that as we here in America are, are starting to see things as a, of a collapse, Lord, but we think of our brothers and sisters that are around the world, especially those that are, that are connected through FGBI, Lord, and Lord, we know that they are right there in the danger of things, Lord. They may have seen those, seen a lot of the dangers and seen a lot of the things that happen, Lord, to their to other brothers that are in and sisters in Christ, Lord. Lord, let us be more about you. Be ready to be ready to take on whatever that may come, Lord, to be able to fight the fight for you, Lord, because we want to be able to go home victorious, Lord, no matter what what happens in the end, Lord. We thank you again, and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church. We will see you Wednesday night. Turn this. Uh, hey, no, no. That's why I figured I'd <laughs>